Hello, art lovers. How do you know when you like a work of art? For many of us, and for me often, it's my first glance. I take a look at a work of art and I respond to it. Either I like it or I don't like it or blah. But sometimes, actually quite often, when I first look at a work of art and then I stop and I pay closer attention to it, my appreciation for it changes. And I want to share with you a work of art that not only did I not like it at first, but I hated it at first. And then when I spent time with it and got to know it better, I fell in love with it. So as with any artwork that we look at, the first thing we'll do is take a quick glance at it, and maybe you can come up with a quick one line or a couple of words to describe what you're seeing. So here it is. Great. Now when I first saw this sculpture, my immediate reaction was, this boy looks angry, he looks alone, he looks isolated, he doesn't look happy, and I didn't like him. I didn't want to be friends with him. I didn't want to get to know him. But I did. I stopped. I got to know him, and my opinion changed. So let's do that. Let's take a look at him, get to know him a little bit better, get to know what he's doing, where he is. All right, who is this boy? He doesn't look particularly strong. In fact, he looks rather effeminate with those long clumps of flowing hair and that uh, slight build of his, and the gangly limbs falling off of that post that he's sitting on. And he doesn't look particularly rich, not aristocratic, though he looks like he might live in a time period where they're aristocrats. He does have nice clothes on, but they're unadorned. He has a trim jacket, but without any decorations, and nice tight pants, but looks like average kid. So he is average, but he does have one particular object that suggests something a little bit more. He has a book. Average, not too strong, not too formidable of a physical presence, but educated. Where is he? He's on a post. He's sitting on a post. Does he have any sense? Why can't he sit on a bench, or on a couch, or in a chair? No, he's sitting on a post. All right, let's take a look at this post of his. There's a ring on it. Great, a little place for him to put his foot. And then further down, there's water that's splashing up against the post. It might even splash on him, but he doesn't seem to mind. So he's sitting on this post with water. Oh, this could be a docking post where boats come up and uh, tie themselves to a pier. All right, let's fill in this scene a little bit. He's sitting on this docking post, and in front of him, it looks like there's a sea. Behind him, maybe a pier, and maybe some people, like sailors going back and forth, and perhaps farther behind that, a town, where there's some hustle and bustle going on. But he's there on this post by himself. It doesn't look like he's there waiting to meet anybody. He's looking out to sea. And he's sitting there, though it looks rather uncomfortable. It seems like he has uh, arranged himself so that he is balanced, and he seems nicely perched. So perhaps he is familiar with this place. He's come here before. And in fact, there is a clue that suggests that he has. You might have noticed on the side of the post, there is some engraving. Not the one at the back that looks like an official seal that was carved into the post and at its inception, but something that was later added on. There's some graffiti, almost, carved in. And if we take a close look at it, it looks like a ship. Uh, an intricate little ship, but crudely drawn. I used to draw pirate ships when I was a kid, and this reminds me of that. Perhaps a kid did that. This is maybe his little personal perch that he's decorated with something that matters to him. Very much like you might decorate a, a space that you go to work or think or read, like my office here. So he's here by himself on his personal perch, and what's he doing? It looks like he has been reading, has been reading, because the book is currently closed. Maybe he is thinking about what he's reading. He's marked that page there. 
So something perhaps that he's been reading has elicited some thoughts, but he's not currently thinking. In fact, his eyes, if you see the direction, are not cast downwards, but off into the distance. That something catches awareness? Is he looking perhaps at a ship that's going by? Maybe, but his eyes aren't squinting, and his whole body isn't reacting. Just his eyes are lifted. So perhaps this is still part of his thinking. Now what kinds of thoughts might he be having? Are they pleasant thoughts, like, oh wow, I can't wait to buy that little toy ship that I saw in the store window yesterday? Maybe not. Take a look at his posture, maybe even take his pose. The shoulder forward, the chin lowered, it's contorted, it's tense, it doesn't feel comfortable. It suggests some kind of struggle, some difficult thoughts. But is he in the middle of his thinking? Maybe not. He's not like that famous statue of the thinker who's got his head down on his, uh, on his chin, deep in the middle of contorted thought. No. He's at a moment where he's kind of breaking away from that thinking and peering off in the distance. But not in a way that suggests that he's not thinking anymore, but as if it's a result of his thinking, as if he's come to some realization, some conclusion. And where is he looking? At the horizon. This is Christopher, Christopher Columbus. And like most school kids during this time period, he was taught that the earth was flat that if you sailed out too far to the west, that you would fall off the edge of the world. And that's what most people thought. Maybe those sailors walking on the pier behind him, the school kids that he would play with in town, that was the conventional wisdom. And perhaps this book that he's reading is bringing forth some new thoughts for him. And maybe he's been struggling over these thoughts as he's been thinking on his little perch. When have you had a moment where you've struggled with what you wanted to do with your life? Especially when it conflicted with what other people might have thought. Maybe what your parents thought, or your friends, or the culture. When I first saw this sculpture, I saw an angry kid. Now, when I see the sculpture, I see a young boy daring to envision the life that he wants to live, the goals that he wants to go after in the midst of struggling with a culture that contradicts those. Thank you very much for sharing this artwork with me. And I look forward to sharing another one with you next time.